What's up, guys? This is Ryan from the Indie Music Academy, and I have with me today Kevin from the Filmmaker's Blog. What's up, guys? And the reason we're making this video is because Kevin here filmed my latest music video, Taking Over Me, and we're going to do a frame-by-frame -frame walkthrough of how we made this music video because we actually made this music video for zero dollars. And so we're going to pass on, well, Kevin's going to pass on his filmmaking knowledge to you guys, and we're going to just tell some stories about how we actually pulled this off without spending any extra money. You Does ready? That sound good? Yeah, that sounds great right. to me. So I guess what well, we do have to start with the disclaimer though, which is that even though we didn't spend any money on this video, we did have equipment. For example, it's kind of hard to film a music video without a camera. That's true. We did use, but we did use the, um, your camera that you are right. you're already using for YouTube. This camera right here, the YouTube yes. camera. So we just used stuff that we already had stuff from past video shoots, mm -hmm. and it was just a matter of utilizing what we had to the best of our abilities. And so, you know, if we give a tactic and we say something, and you don't have that exact piece of gear or that exact light, odds are is that you probably have some kind of light or you, that you have some kind of camera. And there's even a camera on your iPhone. So without further ado, let's go frame by frame and let's go to the screen capture right here where we also Ooh, are being get in filmed. This. <laughs> nice. Like a lot of people would see a frame that's not workable, but I kind of knew what I could do in the post-production process in cropping out, you yeah. know, basically the house <laughs> and yeah. the sides of the frame. You basically just removed everything outside of this little circle totally. here. And created yeah. a circle and faded it in, feathered it in. Yeah, nice. So this was Happened. the very first idea. Yes, this was yeah. the silhouette shot that I wanted yeah. on just a gray background because uh -huh. we really didn't have a background. So I said, let's just put up a white sheet and make it gray. <laughs> you right. know? Yeah. So it's just a gray background. This is all done with one light. Right, I have the, the light positioned. right above. Yeah, yeah, right above, coming in at just a slight angle to create that rim just around your face. So, you so can anyone can make see. this shot if they just have a white sheet, one light, and then if they have the nighttime, right? Because that's <laughs> totally, <laughs> right? totally. Yeah. So no. just use the dark and one light, and then you can recreate this exact shot if you like it. And then what's the what's the, like the secret sauce that we threw in to make it look extra cool? This shot right here? Yeah. Well. Starts with an F. Oh, we, we're, talking no. we're talking about fog. We're talking about fog. That's like the one yes. thing that people might not have. True, true. Fog machine yeah. is a niche product. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For well, we sure. got ours at Guitar Center, so yeah. technically a, a musical yeah. uh, expense. I mean, yeah, we got that years ago back when, when uh, I'd help you play your shows. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I play drums for you, and we'd just throw the fog machine underneath, underneath the, the drum set. And whenever <laughs> that thing kicked on, I couldn't breathe for a whole chorus. So, yeah, so. That's, that's where that originated, and that's how we kind of brought this into the project. All right, so, yeah, just be careful. <laughs> Maybe if you have like a desk lamp or something, just make mm -hmm. sure it's like, I don't know, tied yeah. to a string. Totally. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, just, beauty, yeah. the beauty about this frame is that it's a tight shot, and you can have your buddy hold a light on a ladder exactly. right outside of the frame mm -hmm. and no one will know any different. That's right. This shot, I mean, this is one of the most simple shots, but there's a couple of magical things to it. <clears throat> one is that this was during sunset, which is called golden hour. Yes. Right. And mm -hmm. what happens during golden hour? The sun gets beautiful, a nice orangey tone. And mm -hmm. it also just gets a little softer. Mm -hmm. And the intensity goes down because obviously the sun's going down. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're shooting at 12 noon, it's way bright. And at this point, it's just a little softer. But we did use a neutral density filter, ND filter on this. Right. To what does that do for someone who doesn't own one? In one sentence, it's sunglasses for your camera. Okay. It stops yeah. down all of the light mm -hmm. without you know, tinting your image at all. Right. And we had that just because I think I bought it before I went to Nepal to film some stuff. Yeah. 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 So I actually this, bought the same one that you got like yeah. a couple years ago. It's great. Yeah. So sunglasses for your camera. You don't need it because you could just go into this camera settings if you're going to shoot because we're shooting directly into the sun mm -hmm. to get that um, outline, that mm -hmm. hair light. It's more like a light explosion in some shots. Totally. Where is it? Oh, there it is. 
Oh, did you? Uh, that's not in post. That's real, right? That's the real sun. Yeah, no, that's the sun peeking yeah. through, flaring straight okay. into the camera. Yeah. That's, so that's the magic of like shooting into the sun is that you can just get that explosion of light and it makes yeah. it look like really fun and uh, dynamic. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of my cinematography breakdown videos, I talk about interactive lighting. Mm -hmm. You know, any time where you can get the lights to do something that's separate than your subject brings another layer right. of just eye candy to the frame. And mm -hmm. anytime you moved, the sun would peek through and then it would stop. So yeah. that brought an extra layer in the mm -hmm. lighting. And, you know, lucky for us, it's just the sun. So we didn't have to do anything extra with that. The uh, So there's one more thing that I think we need to talk about for this shot. Mm -hmm. And it's that we had a third crew member uh, actually holding a reflector. My wife was with us because yes. if you're shooting directly into the sun, like... The sun is pretty bright. It's very bright. My face, it's bright. It's very white, but it's not <laughs> white enough. Right. That's right. So we had to bounce light with a reflector right yeah. back in. And that was just like, gosh, that was like $20 on Amazon that we bought yeah, in high super school, cheap. I think, or something Five like tool that. reflector comes in very clutch when you need it to. Yeah. And I mean, I think we're, we're uh, missing the biggest point here is this looks like we shot it, you know, somewhere fairly nice. This is literally off the freeway. Oh, yeah, this, is, this is off the entrance of a freeway. so much noise and people were honking at us. A lot of wind too. I don't know what they thought we were doing. Yeah. They probably thought we were shooting a Hollywood I didn't, film. I didn't know if they were angry at us or they were <laughs> like, you know, praising us. Either way, it was distracting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so many clips yeah. of people honking. We're just like... <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, they're saying it. I was pretty nervous though. We were just like kind of off to the side. Yeah. I was like, let's hurry this up. So, yeah, <laughs> all we need is highway patrol. To come yeah, we, and we shut don't us got down. no permits. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, usually you need a permit to film on totally. what is this like technically government property? Yeah, but this is this is independent filmmaking, yeah. and in the indie world, we say ask for forgiveness, not for permission. Indie filmmaking. All mm -hmm. right. So this shot. There's okay. Let me find the perfect frame. Mm -hmm. Let's start here. There's a. Oh, I love that frame. Oh yeah. There's the. There's oh my diarrhea gosh. Face right yeah, there. right there. Okay, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep it on diarrhea face. Um. So this there's a lot more going on than what meets the eye. Mm -hmm. Uh. I'll just start out for a couple of reasons. There's totally. actually a lot of lights just in this setting naturally. So like the buildings, the street lamps. There's all these like little glimmers, mm -hmm. um, and you'll just see it throughout the background and all yeah. the shots but then so that car behind me is actually your car yeah and then there's another car which which is off camera because it's just a camry it's like, it was it wasn't as cool i mean not as cool it's just a scion xb but when you don't look at it very closely it looks kind of tough <laughs> yeah it looks like a miniature like range rover or something. yeah 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 it looks like a, a baby hummer yeah you but, know you know but not really <laughs> <laughs> not 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 at all actually but yeah. just a little bit actually yeah the more i look at it the more it looks like a toy car <laughs> yeah don't don't look at the car so, look at diarrhea face <laughs> so okay so uh yeah so the other car's headlights are coming in uh, onto onto the left side yeah so your fill side which mm -hmm. is the more orange yeah. um tungsten side it's what what we kind of call it yeah. is the other car's headlights coming straight onto you yeah okay and then the brightest light of all is it's not a practical meaning it doesn't come from a car it doesn't mm -hmm. come with a street lamp yeah it's actually uh, one of your studio lights yeah so it's a uh, aperture 300d that mm -hmm. i picked up on sale not for this project, of course. This is a zero <laughs> project. I bought it a while ago. Um, but I have it uh, with a Fresnel attachment on. Basically, what that means is just a glass attachment to mm -hmm. the light to make it more directional um, as well as evenly lit. Mm -hmm. But um, but what was tricky with this is that if you just play through it, um, this scene had a lot of movement to it. Yeah. And when you're lighting something that has a lot of movement to it, you need to be aware of how like how much ground you're taking up right because mm -hmm. obviously when you back away from a light you get darker when you get closer you get brighter but the further the light is away from your subject the less that happens mm -hmm. so i needed a light that was powerful enough where you have the mobility to move around and the lighting doesn't change that much there you go yeah so that was that was the trickiest part of this scene and then we almost 
did the same exact thing um, with the sun in the last shot with mm -hmm. the car headlights Good in this point. shot. Yeah. That's our backlight. And if we didn't have that, he would just mesh into that nasty gravy of a tree, that darkness <laughs> back there, right? You wouldn't yeah. be able to tell what's his jacket and what's the background because they're both black. Mm -hmm. And um, those headlights, as well as the practicals, like you said, any light that's naturally found mm -hmm. in the in the shot in the background is helping helping just separate you from the background. I mean, basically, lighting is the secret to a good uh, a good shot, right? It a is. Video. I mean, we're using a you know, a consumer camera that anyone could get, yeah. you know, it has nothing super special to it. Yeah. And you know, if you just light it fairly well, mm -hmm. it can really pop. And that's one way to do it is have a strong backlight. I think he's got some just... moves, right? <laughs> Jeez, he's got some moves. You should have seen the first take. He's like a little oh, robot. Dude. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We used a gimbal for this. Oh, that yeah. So we, yeah. we had a gimbal, so smooth shots, but you could easily do that with the tripod or just by yeah, you know any stabilization mm -hmm. there's stabilization built into your iPhone. Yeah um, Well, they have five axis stabilization cameras now with lenses. Yeah but. Oh, and another thing is that so we've been talking a lot about backlighting and how it looks really cinematic The other thing that backlighting does in this shot is that it actually lights up the ground So what Kevin was saying mm -hmm. earlier like this gravy of a tree This would be also just like a black hole of darkness on the yeah. ground if it wasn't for those car headlights mm -hmm. So the car headlights it's lighting up um, the outline of my body right here, and then it's also lighting up the ground totally. just to make the frame a lot more interesting. You can see it in the back left, too, uh, how dark the cement really was. Mm -hmm, right and here, yeah. if that was everywhere, you yeah. know, it wouldn't be the same. Or so far, we've side. only used one light. Oh, right? yeah. One, yeah. One light. One light. the same light for this shot. We just put it right above my head. Mm -hmm. Then this one, we just kind of put it far away and put it on max brightness. And we're getting creative with our fill and our backlight using yeah. the sun and are using our cars. Yeah, using the cars, exactly. And if they, come on, I mean, not everyone watching is gonna have a crazy bright light, but you might have like a Home Depot light in your shed. I'll do it. It'll do the same do exact it. thing. In fact, I think we did that on one of your uh, short films for school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just like got some Home Depot lights for like $20. Clutch. So, and then when we returned them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were clutch. Yeah. <laughs> Again, free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the car headlights right here. Mm -hmm. And we just put the brights on. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Leave the cars running. Oh, yeah. yeah. Leave the cars running if you want to go home. <laughs> if you don't right. want to go home, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. So this this is a cool shot here that you, that you fixed up in the edit to make I it look did. cool. Right? So oh. let's talk about that really quick. Suave. Suavemente. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so um, that was basically, it's, it's a 180, but mm -hmm. the way I scaled it in, in terms of uh, speed duration, how fast the clips are going, mm -hmm. I kind of ramped up your spin um, to make it more impactful on the downbeat. So you actually sped up my spin. Yes. So wow. there's two two clips put together. The mm -hmm. first one is a sped up spin on the wide shot, mm -hmm. cut into our medium shot. That's mm -hmm. normal time. Yeah. Very and then cool. I just synced up the two clips. Yeah. When I first saw that, I was like, "Wow, that's a lot cooler than what I remember it being." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, it's a very simple thing, but mm -hmm. you know, it's very impactful, especially paired up to the downbeat. Yeah. Okay. And then what do we have next? More of that. More of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got that glitch effect in there. Oh yeah, right here. Where is it? Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, and we have the the your uh your horn one, Tatanka. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what movie that's from, shoot it, you... shoot it in the comments. What? Shoot it in the comments. Zero percent of you are gonna get that reference. Zero percent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right there. Yeah. So this is actually a really simple effect anyone can do and mm -hmm. it's a an opacity driven effect which when you change the opacity you change the intensity of the shot not in terms of how bright it is but how much it's physically there to almost being you know transparent when you put it all the way to zero like it's not right. so what i did in this shot is i duplicated the clip about five mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. i masked around your body which basically means i kind of cropped everything you else but out. you yes yeah. and then i positioned you above 
like kind of like a stack, a uh-huh. stack of stairs. Yeah. And then I would do a motion graphic to put them all in. And I did mm-hmm. it all within Premiere, you know, with just a couple of keyframes and probably 15 minutes. Yeah. You know? So basically you just duplicated me, you cut me out, and then you just made me like you know, semi transparent. Yeah. And you just stacked me on top of me. That's right. I mean, that was better explanation <laughs> than what I had. Um, uh, I mean, it worked really well mm-hmm. in this, um, this shot mm-hmm. because the background, um, it's, is it's uniform. Just, yeah, it's uniform. It's bland. You know, I yeah. couldn't have done it as easily in any of the other shots because yeah. in this one, it's always a white background, mm-hmm. you know, it's always a white gray background. And if that ever gets slightly off, mm-hmm. no one will ever, ever be able to tell okay Okay. so my personal favorite part of the video let's just Mm -hmm. watch it through okay nice oh yeah so a lot going on here lots so So, this was the one planned part of the entire video i'd mm -hmm. say yeah. And what I wanted to do with RGB. But even this glitch effect was not planned um, until mm-hmm. I was in the editing process. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm using the keypad to go frame by frame. So you literally had to go into the editor and cut out the blue clip and the red clip mm-hmm. to like the smallest possible frame and put them side by side alternating to make this effect, right? This strobe. It was a completely manual thing that you did, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the building blocks of this, and we'll show the raw footage, which mm-hmm. is kind of funny, is it's just Ryan on this green screen. That's mm-hmm. it. And we're shooting colored RGB lights onto him. Mm-hmm. And the idea going in, which I saw in like an Imagine Dragons music video or something like that, mm-hmm. where the character was uh, lit with all one color and the color behind them was that same color, Mm -hmm. a little more neon, we didn't go that route. Yeah. But that was the idea. So when I shot him on the green screen, I took out the green, cropped everything else, Mm -hmm. and put in a red that matched your color correction, Mm -hmm. and then a blue that matched your color correction. So this is actually just a computer generated red background. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Wow, but I'm red because you actually have a red light. Yes, I have red light hitting you Mm -hmm. for sure yeah so that's interesting so this is kind of like a hybrid shot and that you you can get like those rgb like alternating red and blue almost Mm -hmm. like a blue lightsaber and a red lightsaber (laughs) yes the the fight of good versus evil yeah totally but yeah i cut it all down to one frame each Mm -hmm. um put them back and forth Mm -hmm. and it creates this like you said a strobe but it also kind of when we're processing this, it meshes the two pictures together, yeah. you know, so you're still resonating on the last frame as the new frame comes in and it almost yeah. looks like they're on top of each other. Totally. And that's what I, I really like about it. Um, and the framing was fairly consistent. So like your eyes are actually, actually I did that manually. So mm. I put your eyes in the same spot of the frame so that even though all of this craziness is happening, you, you can focus. You can yeah. focus on something yeah. and your eyes aren't wandering. That would make it really disorienting actually. Yeah, if you were always we have looking to lock around to something. Like usually mm-hmm. when we look at a person, we look into their eyes. Mm-hmm. And so that's what you did just to make that shot look a little more appealing. Totally. Another uh, really trippy part about shooting that entire sequence, so I'll send you the video because I, I took it on my phone, but when, when we get down into color theory and color science, when we were shooting the red mm-hmm. shot, uh-huh. you know, all red light, uh-huh. um, there is no green in oh. red light. Yeah. Something that's a color because that color is being reflected back and right. every other color is being absorbed. Right. That's why it has a color. White reflects everything back black absorbs everything right you know so when you're Fourth shooting grade. yeah when, you, when you're shooting red light yeah. there's no green in that color so when we set up the green screen i put it just on top of a black screen that we had i turned away and it was green i turned away turned on all the lights walked back and it was black and it looked like I didn't even set up a green screen. It looked invisible because it was on a black background. I was flipping out. I was like, where did this green screen go? But mm. what we needed to do was shine white light to reflect the green in the right. scene. So we just put a normal light on the green screen only. Mm-hmm. 
and then the color lights were just on totally everything else totally yeah, yeah. so we pushed in the background mm -hmm. through that light on and that way the camera can see green yeah because at first i thought it was like my eyeballs you know it's like yeah. 2 a.m at this point yeah. and i was just like losing it but when i checked yeah. the camera i knew it was it was for real <laughs> yeah and then where did we get these colored lights just so the viewer knows dude Scott Leslie for the win. Scott Leslie. Scott let us, Leslie. Let us borrow his lights. Yes, we just borrowed him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, great lights. Yeah. Really awesome. So if you're able to borrow stuff if that you don't want to buy, that you cannot buy, because mm -hmm. these lights are rare, basically. Yeah, I mean... I don't know anyone else who has these cool red and blue it's lights. Just, I mean, there's actually some, some uh, cheaper versions that you can get right now. Mm -hmm. But again, we're going free. Yeah. And the worst thing that someone can say is no. So just make yeah. sure you ask and, yeah. and check your outlets because, I mean, a lot of part of this, uh, all of this video was based on what we had mm -hmm. and what we could get and what we could borrow, Yeah, you know, without yeah. spending money. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we were able to do. Yeah. So if we weren't able to get these colored lights, we would just have figured out something else to do. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So I think our plan B was um, um, some type of uh, car shot. You know, that's right. Yeah. yeah we driving, were driving, driving downtown and, and having the, yeah. uh, some sort of sequence like that. That was our mm -hmm. plan B if this didn't work out. Yeah. So there you go. If we just, you know, kind of shot for the moon and we got some colored lights. So <laughs> that's going to be that's poetry right there. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> the second verse has such a fat synth bass <laughs> that the first time I heard it, I immediately thought neon. You yeah. know, neon RGB. Yeah. We didn't get neon, but we got RGB. <laughs> <laughs> right. We got halfway there. Yeah. And, you know, the most important thing is that we actually... Oh, there's some more diarrhea face. Mm. <laughs> the most important thing is that we actually just finished the video. You yeah. Know, totally. We got some of our ideas in. It's just... The most important thing is just to get something out and to do something. And mm -hmm. don't judge yourself too much, you know, and it's really about consistency and output and just sharing your creativity that really matters especially if you're if you're lagging if you're not getting it out i mm. mean uh, definitely for me a lot of projects and this one in certain aspects of certain effects after i built it and i showed you and and we were really ecstatic about it, it looked great you know after seeing it 900 times you're yeah. like is this still cool or <laughs> is it just because i saw it 900 times yeah you know yeah and uh, you know this song man I, I don't think anyone else will listen to this song as much as I have. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know, I know times. every lyric, I know just every, every single thing about this yeah. song. So that's really yeah. big. You know, when you're going in to make a music video. If, if you like this song before you start making the music video, you'll be in okay with the song by the end <laughs> right. because you just listen to it so many times. Yeah. But if you don't like the song, if you hate the song when you start, you'll hate yourself when you end. <laughs> you right. <go>. Yeah. That's <laughs> but right. no, I, this song's great. And, and, uh, even then I was still vibing to it when I finished it and man, it was playing in my head when I was trying to sleep. Oh my gosh. And just like, there's no noise. It's just taking <laughs> over me. It was just like rolling around. Yeah. Just trying. It's, <laughs> it probably is the... It was the anthem of my life for about yeah. two months. <laughs> Easy peasy. Okay, so let's just wrap this up by saying, okay, yes, we had some stuff that we borrowed yes. that we already had. Well, I mean, I've been making videos for a while. Mm -hmm. You've been making videos. Forever, you know, yeah. We've invested in ourselves in the past. Yeah. It's only right that we use some of that stuff to make yeah. some of our future I mean, stuff. Maybe in the future we'll do a challenge where we do a music video with just our iPhone or something. Dude, iPhone and Home Depot? iPhone and Home Depot challenge. Yeah. Hey, if you're still here, <laughs> throw it in the comments if you want to see iPhone Home Depot. There you go. That'd be, iPhone and Home awesome. Depot music video. That'd be great. Yeah, with a budget, with like a $50 budget. Now we're talking. Yeah, that's Now we're talking. I don't yeah, know. This is, no, no budget. We just got to run into Home Depot and hope we didn't don't get caught, or return everything successfully. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we'll let That's you know true. what we can't return. Yeah, see, I immediately went to theft, <laughs> and Ryan Ryan went to return it. So, yeah. which is like way more uh, jerk move, you know? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm straight stealing. That's kind of return policy is a return policy. That's what I'm saying. So here's the thing with music videos. You know, artists want music videos to be like really flashy. They think it's a really huge thing. Yeah, bigger is better. Yeah, they their image is tied to it, which is true to an extent. Mm -hmm. 
But the fact of the matter is that music videos, more likely than not, are not going to make you any money. They're not going to increase your bottom line as an artist. What it's going to do is just kind of reinforce the things of your brand that are already there, that are already established. So, you know, I could have spent, what, $1,000 on a video. I could yeah. have spent $10,000 on a video by hiring a music video company. But you'd right? be 10, 10 Gs in the hole right now. 10 Gs in right? the hole. And that's what people did in the old music industry where you'd spend $20,000 on a music video, try to get on MTV, you know, and try to just kind of use that as a catapult for your music career. But that's not how it works anymore. With YouTube, anyone can upload and distribute a music video. And in fact, someone making a $0 music video has the same chances as blowing up as someone making a $10,000 music video. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, when it comes down to it, it comes down to you guys in the video, the artists behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, the video could be amazing, but everything else has to stack up too. Yeah. And even on the video front, really quick, I mean, we saw... I mean, we did some cool stuff in here, you know, mm -hmm. and we had the ability to get some cool gear for this video. Right. Borrowing those RGB lights. Totally. Um, but the biggest thing is the bigger you go, the harder you fall, right? Totally. And a lot of videos I see, the ones that don't pan out very well, it's because people just went too big and mm -hmm. they couldn't handle it. They didn't either know how to do it or just things fell apart, you mm -hmm. know, in the process. Mm -hmm. And when you guys are planning out your zero dollar or low budget music video, mm -hmm. make sure you guys do something that you can nail, exactly. you know, because something simple that you guys nail and completely knock out of the park yeah. will be better than something more intricate that's just not quite there. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't want to, won't see something that's not quite there again, but something they've seen before that's awesome, they'll watch that again. Totally. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys just were inspired by how simple this actually was. And even if you don't have the same gear that we have, you can substitute out almost everything for something that you already have. Like an iPhone that shoots 4K or you know any light in your house, you can just take it like a desk lamp, put it somewhere. I, sh I showed you some shots with backlighting. You can do that with any light. It doesn't have to be a film making light like what Kevin has. Mm -hmm. So just use this as inspiration. Feel free to try to recreate these shots in your own music videos. Mm -hmm. Everything that we did, we just did in our homes or in our uh, neighborhood. Or on just, the side of the road. Or on the side of the freeway. You know? Yeah. Again, use your resources, guys. Yeah. You know, Ryan used me. That's right. I was a big resource because I, I do film, I do video. Mm -hmm. Find someone who does film and video and get it going right make a trade do something I, I did a trade with you what did i give you in exchange for your expertise a beautiful bottle of whiskey there you go that's a trade there so, it is so you guys i hope that this video is inspiring and if this channel has helped you at all uh, just drop a like and let us know in the comments what your favorite part about this video and if there's anything that was confusing or surprising we'd love to dive in and answer any of your comments and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a future video and hit that notification bell as well. So once again, I'm Ryan from the Indie Music Academy. This is Kevin from the Filmmaker's Blog. I'll put the link to his channel in the description as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.